mirror, mirror on the wall. And, well, everywhere else. Mirrors aren't just there for our vanity. We have rear view mirrors on cars for safety and security mirrors in and around our buildings. We use mirrors as parts of solar power plants, in high definition television sets, in cameras, microscopes, telescopes and in all sorts of industrial machinery. These mirrors are often incredibly specialized and advanced. The mirror segments on the James Webb Space Telescope are polished so smooth that if you stretched them out across the United States, the largest bump would be no more than two inches tall. Today, mirrors are everywhere. Imagine then the world before the Renaissance, when we didn't even have mirrors that could tell us what we looked like. The earliest mirrors were made from volcanic glass or bronze, but not everyone had a volcano and even if they had such mirrors, you couldn't see much in them. A bronze mirror reflected only 20% of the light. That's why the Bible used it as a metaphor for not seeing the whole truth. For now we see in a mirror, darkly. This means that most people in most places actually didn't know what they looked like. Modern glassmaking in Venice changed that. In the 1300s, new glass mirrors coated with a mixture of tin and mercury were produced. Just imagine, suddenly people could stare into their own eyes for the first time. They could see their unique characteristics and expressions, and they began to understand how others saw them. This was not just a boon for the beauty industry. Historians like Ian Mortimer think it changed our very psychology and made us more individualistic. People started to think of themselves as unique, not just part of a group. We can see evidence of this in art, in Italy and in the Low Countries. People began to order portraits of themselves, and artists started making self-portraits. Letters were increasingly filled with expressions of thoughts and feelings, rather than just accounts of activities or formalities and requests. But mirrors were still largely for the elite. In the 17th century, a French countess reportedly traded a wheat farm for a mirror, thinking it a bargain. Only with modern capitalism and mass manufacturing could everyone and anyone afford a mirror, and we started using them for all sorts of other purposes. Mercury remained a basic material in mirrors, despite its health hazards. Then, in the 19th century, investors and businesses replaced mercury with silver nitrate, and then with aluminum. It's lighter, cheaper, and better still, it's not poisonous. Seeing yourself in the mirror early Monday morning is distressing enough, even without the danger of mercury poisoning. Hey, check out these other great videos from Free to Choose Network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get updated on episodes of New and Improved with me, Johan Norberg.